looks like it's some old kind of Turkish bath. A Turkish Sultan. <laughs> wow. And yeah, I must say, guys, it's a bit, sp a bit spooky. Some very beautiful groves here. These trees with the snow on top of them is a bomb shelter hello guys good afternoon from a pretty cold pretty cloudy very murky and misty day in Cherepsi so today I'm planning on going to a Jewish cemetery and the Turkish square to show exactly how diverse the city is in terms of its history so it's got a big Jewish influence I think the Ottoman Empire just about spread this far into Bukovina. And as per usual guys, we'll, I'll be filming along the way the weird and wonderful things which we see hopefully bump into a market so i want to show you guys how fantastic ukrainian markets are it's a very very old school way of getting your groceries it's a way which we lost in western europe a long time ago maybe my grandma's generation probably did this went down to the market and got fresh produce off local dealers oh not maybe not dealers they're not vegetable dealers black market vegetables but yeah off of um, sellers and farmers the one reason I love Ukraine is because it's so old school in terms of you're walking around the streets hmm, that's a convenient alarm and you want to say old school guys I don't mean kind of 1990s former Soviet vibe tracksuits that's Albania I mean what takes you back to a classical Europe of probably a hundred years ago had things had a bit of a charm about them and there was still a big human element to many processes as opposed to in much of the world these days where it's automated it's just you go to the supermarket you just pick up like a robot and scan on the self scanner these days so lots of things in Ukraine take you back to a charming era where things were still quite human even the buses as we can see here this bus has came off the track and the conductor's having to put it back on by herself, actually, it's a lady. She's finally got it back on track. Got a beautiful little square here, actually. It's a restaurant. It's a little German restaurant here. Knaus, Willkommen. Biergarten. I think we can all understand what that means. I'm speaking slowly now because it's so cold. It's like my mouth nerves aren't working. Anyway, what? Yeah, it's quite common here to hear people say, uh, yeah, goodbye, have a good day, and peaceful skies over your head. So it's a pretty common thing. Mir Novanyeva, it's like wishing you peaceful skies. And it's something which even a year ago nobody would have said, of course.
And this square here, guys, is Ottoman, I believe. So I never actually knew that the Ottoman Empire came quite as high up, quite as far up as even this part of Ukraine, Bukovina. It is bloody freezing now, guys. I was expecting today to be quite nippy, but it's not even that it's so cold in terms of degrees. It's just windy and the air is very wet. So it's only about minus one, I'd say. But it feels about minus bloody 15 because it's constant chill in the air and it's very moist. Try school here. Oh, what's this down here? This is interesting. Oh, very interesting. Looks like it's some old kind of Turkish baths. Unfortunately, it's all littered now. Got taps here. And yeah, we're going to climb these steps now of the Turkish street. I think these stairs have seen better days. There's a story also, romantic story, that at this point here, a Turkish Sultan fell in love with a, well I've read, and it says a, a simple Ukrainian girl on Wikipedia. So yeah, I know that the, uh, the Turks do like the Ukrainian women. There's been a few examples of a history of Ukrainian women from the farms being having a big influence on the sultans it's quite easy to understand why why the sultans had a soft spot for ukrainian women On a snowball fight, there's literally like tiniest amount of snow ever on the floor, and they're still like they're literally recycling snowballs and they're using the same snowballs like. 50 times because there's so little snow. Oh. Nice coffee. Uh, this isn't actually on my list of things to say what I like about Ukraine more than the UK. But coffee is definitely one. It's like an infinite number of places in Ukraine where you can get a good, cheap coffee, always in very clean, very modern cafes, always friendly. In England, unfortunately, I've heard a few of her bloggers mentioned this like in Eng England probably the worst place in Europe to get a coffee so expensive the quality I mean the quality of the coffee is okay and I quite they do quite like how in Starbucks you get big cups of coffee um, the American style but uh, yeah you go in the places are just like the furniture's all marked and dinted screeching kids and So guys, I've just about warmed up my mouth. It's yeah, really so cold today. Nice church here. Also another very nice church over here. Very beautiful church. It looks wonky. It's not wonky. These are perfectly straight towers, but because they're like in a spiral way, they look like they're leaning. warming my mouth up I know when it's so cold it becomes numb it becomes hard to pronounce my words so I try to warm the bad boy up looks like here at some point there's been like a Soviet style city board I mean it looks that way to me it looks like there's been something up here in the past and probably a board full of the local I don't know council members or wall of fame
things. This van's definitely seen better days, guys. Got a huge market here. I don't know if it's just me. That market had a very unusual vibe to it. Walking about the market, I don't know. So like dogs running about. Didn't want to attract too much attention with the camera. Yeah, that market's like a whole stock market. So businesses go to them to buy their stuff in whole, or like shops can go to them, and then they sell it on again. This is super, super spooky, I'd say. You could definitely film um, an American classic horror movie, I'd say, around here. I think also getting back, it's going to be dark. And I think getting back is going to be pretty spooky as well. So this here is the start of the Jewish graveyard. The Jewish graveyard's just here. This is kind of the old, some old, I don't know, administration house. And then over here, you got the start of it. And there's actually so many graves. And I can see that they're all in Yiddish, or most of them are in Yiddish. And they all have the Star of David on them. And yeah, a lot of these Jews, we can see, died in the 50s. So all of these people who died here now will have outlived World War II. Wow. Here we've got the Ukrainian, like, Orthodox Church graveyard. That seems to be closed, unfortunately. Oh no! We can get in through here. This must be the synagogue. Ah, oh, so they built this Beid Kashisin, Kadishin, in memory of the Holocaust victims of Bukovina. And that's interesting, it's going to be. It finished in 2009, started in 2017, and it's going to be a museum in 2025 which is quite interesting so we can see it's basically finished 
already, but also there's going to be like a little terrace here. Wow, these are very interesting tombs. And yeah, these aren't from World War II. This isn't a Holocaust graveyard. Wow, this is even in German. So this guy's called Bruno Tittinger. A very Jewish name, or kind of German Jewish name. And his whole tomb's in German. And he passed away in 1883. Wow. Very, in very interesting, guys. So we've got a graveyard here in totally different languages. So some of it's in German, some of it's in Yiddish. This is in... Okay, also in German, back from the Austro-Hungarian days, and totally different people too who lived here to now. So interesting how in one place, like 100 years ago, 150 years ago, it was totally different language, different culture, different traditions, and that's why this place is so cool, Czernitsu, because it's in the absolute heart of Europe and it's been influenced by so many different cultures over the years. I never knew how many Jews lived in Chernivtsi, so there must have been so, so many if this is a graveyard. This is huge. A very fascinating place and there's like four languages just in this graveyard. So lots are in Yiddish. The older tombs are in Yiddish and German. The Tombs from the Soviet times are in Yiddish and Russian and the modern tombs are in Yiddish and Ukrainian And yeah, I must say guys, it's a bit, sp a bit spooky actually Especially since it's getting dark. I'm gonna to get to the end of here and I think I'm gonna turn back I'll definitely come back here on a sunny day And yeah, the story of Chernivtsi is typical of many, many Central and Eastern European cities around that time. So, turn of last century, the start of the 1900s, a huge Jewish communities, very successful communities. And then unfortunately, uh, as anti-Semitism rose and the Nazis rose, we all know what happened, unfortunately during World War II and yeah that was the decline of the Jews living in Europe yeah this graveyard unfortunately is dead I mean you have pardon the pun please guys but this graveyard is dead in terms of people so there's there's nobody here no family coming to the graves and I imagine most of the ancestors of these people now probably live in Israel I'd say I don't imagine many at all live still in Chernivtsi so yeah might, they might come now and again to see the graves and come to the city and see the Jewish heritage but yeah very oh, almost slipped but, yeah very few Jews live in Chernivtsi these days we heard we learned about it history that yeah you there's lots of Jews lived in Europe but I never knew just how many it's only when I come to somewhere like this I realized just how many Jews used to live in Europe and it's, um, it's quite eerie to think they don't live here anymore mainly because of one tragic turn of events World War II and then here we can see Soviet style district we've got one here even from 2001 a grave so yeah even still there is a Jewish community in Chernivtsi but I can see by the proportion of old gravestones compared to more modern new gravestones that they're definitely the minority these days in this city also very very interesting to see the Soviet Jewish tombstones they're very much I'd say atheists they don't seem to have any religious connotations about them like this one it's like a history lesson in one graveyard and it's fascinating as well as obviously a little bit depressing <clears throat> yeah
Yes, yeah, so, so many people buried here. So this grave here is of a gentleman who went by the name of Elisa Steinberg, born somewhere else. He moved to Chernivtsi when it was still part of Romania. And he was a teacher in a Yiddish school, obviously quite influential. So says he, he wrote many fables and poems and European fairy tales. And this is where he lies here. And here we can see it's in Ukrainian, German and in English. And again, there's nobody here at all, not even people working or people like selling flowers. So it just goes to show how few Jews now live in Chernobyl and generally in Europe. Joseph Steiner, this guy was called. The Straucher, Straucher family. Edward Straucher. Some very beautiful graves here. Yeah, very interesting place, guys. If you find yourself in Chernobyl, the Jewish graveyard, Jewish cemetery. Anyway, I'm getting out of here. It's a bit too eerie for my liking already. As it's getting dark, this tree is beautiful. These trees with the snow on top of them. There's something in here. Not too sure what it is. If anybody knows what that is, then feel free to comment. So yeah, just in one day, we've had a bit of Turkish heritage. Ottoman, a bit of Jewish, a bit of Austro-Hungarian, obviously Ukrainian, well just generally. And it's so interesting to look a bit further into these cultures and find exactly what they have built, what they have influenced in the city, the legacy of these people who used to inhabit this land. This here, by the way, is a bomb shelter. This is Ukrainian bomb shelter. Shodvysha. So when the time comes, when the air raid alarms go off, then that's the place where especially kids go to. Very interesting building. Get me. Little bloody dog. <laughs> <laughs> 